So the big tech news of this week was that Microsoft announced a brand new ARM architecture push for their laptops and computers. And if you listen to the previous podcast, I talked about how, before they actually announced this, I actually talked about this. Tyler and I talked about how in order for Linux to succeed on ARM, there needs to be more ARM hardware out there other than just Prime 64 and a few random ARM laptops that really nobody buys. So I think it's really important that Microsoft pushes forward with an ARM move once again, even though they've failed at it every single time before. And it seems like this time they've done a fairly good job. I've watched the announcements and stuff or whatever, and I think that from a Linux perspective, it's a good thing that there's going to be more ARM hardware out there because that means that there's going to be more hardware for developers to actually use to develop Linux on. That means that Linux on ARM will get much, much better. So overall, those announcements were really good. But as is usual in Microsoft fashion, they kind of had to mess it up by sticking their foot in it. They created something called Windows Recall. Now, they had a whole bunch of AI stuff. I don't really cover AI on this channel because most of it's nonsense. Now, some of it's actually really cool and probably should deserve to be covered on this channel a little bit more. But... For the most part, I think that AI is one of those buzzwords that just gets stuck on everything just to make it sound cool. Kind of like gaming. Like you, you go to Amazon and you try to find a mouse or something like that. Chances are it's going to say gaming and it, even if it has nothing to do with gaming. Or I saw a gaming toaster at one point. I'm like, what the hell is a gaming toaster? What's a gaming chair? Like, like, like can't you use any chair for gaming? I... I I digress. It's a little weird, but it, I think AI is kind of the same thing. But this recall thing is not just nonsense. It's also a security slash privacy nightmare. So let's talk about it. So Windows Recall or Microsoft Recall or whatever they're calling it is, in their own words, a component that regularly saves snapshots of a com customer's screen and stores them locally and then is shared or possibly shared with app developers to use for whatever reason, right? You can have all your users, your your app users to search through this data and use it in whatever inventive way you, ha you, you come up with. Now, let's just talk about that first sentence. The recall system component regularly saves snapshots of the customer's screen and stores them locally. That doesn't sound great, right? Just that alone brings up a lot of security sirens in the back of your head because they're t going to be taking basically screenshots of your computer as you use it. Now, if I'm just recording a video or I'm watching a YouTube video, I really don't care. I mean, I'm sure in some, some situations that I would care if I was watching a video of some kind. I don't want them to know everything that I do on my computer, but that stuff is like Google knows everything I watch on YouTube anyway so this wouldn't be any more of a privacy violation than google's already doing but if you think about it there are other times when you're doing things on your system where you don't really want a screenshot of it to share with anybody things like entering your address entering your social security number entering your phone number entering a credit card number entering uh, you know a, a copy of your driver's license whatever it happens to be now, I've read through this entire page here, and this is pretty much all the information I was able to find directly from Microsoft on this feature. And while they do say that they have some controls in there for how you manage this in terms of privacy, it's not really all that comforting to know that there's not more here. So you can change how to filter the apps and websites from your screenshots. So this sounds like something you have to do manually. Otherwise, it's going to be broadly, you it takes screenshots of everything. If you don't want to take screenshot of something, you can exclude that, which is great. But there's going to be some things like, I mean, if, if I spend all day in a browser, there's going to be a lot of times when I'm entering information into that browser that I don't want this thing to see, which means I'm going to have to exclude the browser, which would dilute the quality of the information of this tool to begin with so you might as well just shut it off which i think you probably should anyways they allow you to change how the storage works apparently it stays local i don't know if you can trust microsoft to actually keep that promise they're well known for sending data back to their servers what's to stop them from sending something back to the servers when it comes to this and then they do talk about how there is some hello enhanced sign-in security, which I'm assuming is going to be biometrics. 
but it doesn't say anything there about actual encryption. You notice they don't say encryption there in that sense at all. They say built-in security included with secured core PC, which is going to be probably the little chip that's inside the actual laptop. Microsoft Pluton, which I don't know what it is, security processor, which I think should think is probably the same thing. And uh, Windows, hello, enhanced sign-in security, which is going to be the biometric facial thing in your laptop. I would want to make the assumption that that little core, that little chip in there does the encryption, but you think that if it was actually encrypted, that they'd say that it's, you know, encrypted in some form. And even if it is <laughs> encrypted, they're still giving it at, giving that data to app developers in some form or fashion. Otherwise, this would be useless because they're not doing, at least as far as I can tell, anything with it. This is going to be a API that Windows developers can tap into to do whatever they want with, right? And, and it's going to be up to the user to control what data is actually being snapshotted. If they can shut it off at all, it doesn't really say... If they can, they do say something about IT administrators being able to man manage recalls and put limitations on it. It doesn't say anything about regular users being able to do that because I don't know if when if Windows has Windows client management for everyone or not. I don't think that they do. So the bottom line here is that Windows or Microsoft in this case, Microsoft is using Windows to take screenshots or of your computer every second that you use it. They will have some management tools up there somewhere. I'm sure that they will. But the idea is still pretty damn scary. Now, I had the point made to me on Mastodon that this isn't really anything new. They've tried to do this a couple times, you know, broadly. And they enabled teams to basically do it during the pandemic when they wanted corporations to be able to take a look at their employees' computers while they're working, right? And, and that kind of thing has been around for a very long time. My point was that when I was talking to that person on Mastodon was that this is much broader and as far as we know, this is going to be something that's going to be turned on by default. Now, whether or not that actually ends up being the case, we're pretty sure that's the way it's going to be right now because, you know, otherwise no one would actually use it. So it's probably going to be on by, by default. You're going to have to know to manage this in some way if you want to exclude the applications that it's going to be taking pictures of. It's going to be a mess because the vast majority of people who use Windows are just regular people. They may not know that this thing ever actually exists. And that's not great like from a privacy and security perspective the fact that this could be going on on just some random person's laptop that they're not tech techie at all you know this is kind of not great like you don't want this to happen on your grandmother's or your mother's or your any of your family's laptops and if you don't take the initiative to turn this thing off or put limitations or whatever on it whatever you can you know you're going to have problems so there are going to be of course the Windows guys who come into the comments and say, well, you're just, you know, a Linux fanboy. Of course, you're going to suggest everyone use Linux, which, of course, I do. But, you know, that's beside the point. You know, you're overreacting like normal because this is, you know, just Microsoft doing whatever it is. You'll probably be able to turn this off. It's going to be great. It's a, it's a nothing burger, basically, is what the Windows fans are going to say. I would respectfully disagree. I don't think that this is a uh, anything nothing but a blatant attack on privacy across the board. Now, stored locally is going to be their defense mechanism for this. Like, oh, it's going to be st it's going to stay on your device. You you have full control over the data. I don't trust Microsoft, and neither should you. Okay, that is just really the bottom line. When it, they're collecting as much data as they want, basically by installing a key logger and a screen logger on your machine and storing it, and their operating system is closed source, how are we to know that they're not actually taking it, some of that or all that data and shipping it back to their servers at Redmond? Right? We, we don't know. Now, maybe you want to take their word for it, and that's okay. I mean, maybe, maybe that's an okay thing to do. You know, maybe. We can't say because it's, it's closed source. So, I think that this is just something that everyone should be informed about. I'm not going to recommend that you go out and start, you know, install Gen 2 or something. If you're a Windows user, I've talked about before on this channel that a lot of people who are on Windows are using Windows for a reason. Like, especially if they know what Linux is, but they choose still to remain on Windows, they've probably chosen to remain on Windows for a reason. And those reasons are important for them. What you're going to have to do if you're in that situation where you've kind of had to choose Windows because of a reason, whether it's gaming or Adobe or, you know, CAD or something like that. If it's one of those, you know, reasons why you just really can't leave Windows, you're going to have to make the choice of whether or not it's going to be 
it's kind of like an equation where you have to determine whether or not your privacy is as important as those applications and you kind of got to really decide. The other thing that's going to happen because of stuff like this and ads and the, the, the start menu and all the stuff that they're really just kind of mucking around with Windows on is that a lot of people are going to be staying on 10 forever. Like they're going to be on Windows 10. I mean, we thought XP was bad when it comes to people just staying on it. 10 is going to be way, way worse, like like way, way worse because they've actually made Windows way, way worse than 7 or Vista or 8 ever actually were, right? In comparison to Vista, I mean, I know that technically, technically 11 is actually more functional than Vista was because Vista was a, a freaking mess. But in terms of privacy and ads and all this stuff that they just kind of keep... Sh- the, the insidification of Windows just continues, and people are noticing, right? They are, regular people do notice, like, like my mom uses Windows, and she is constantly noticing things that are just randomly placed on her machine that she has no idea what they're there for or why, and oftentimes they remove things from, like, the start menu that they, like, she's pinned applications there for a reason, and they remove them after an update. Like, the applications still exist, they just remove the pins for whatever reason. They've been doing this for a while, and and regular people are noticing. So, if you are in the situation where you have to use Windows, you kind of have to think about how far is too much. Like, at what, what point is it too much to deal with when it comes to everything that Windows, or that Microsoft is doing for Windows, or doing to Windows? And, and eventually, I, I think that a lot of people, and I think more and more people are thinking, well, you know, I just can't take this anymore. I'm going to Linux. I'm going to struggle through. I'm going to find the alternatives to apps that I need to, that I can, and do as much as I can on Linux. And then a lot of people, I think, that who still do have to have Windows will choose to dual boot, where they'll spend the most of their time in Linux, and they'll have a small partition for Windows when they need to do that, play that one game that they can't get on Linux, or two games or whatever, or the CAD software or whatever. They'll go there, do the stuff there, and then they'll come back to to Linux just to do their regular, normal, generic computing. I think that that's the solution for a lot of people. I've heard a lot of people talk about that, and... Stuff like Recall is going to drive more and more people that way. So, good news for Linux, but if you're on Windows, Microsoft needs to stop screwing you. Like, like this is just bad. So, anyways, if you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon and Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can also follow me over on PeerTube. I'm available on TIL Vids, which is a PeerTube instance. Uh, not all of my videos are there, but the most recent ones are, so you can find that link in the video description as well. Anyways, you can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. I really do appreciate everyone who does support me over there on Patreon and YouTube and Kofi and all that stuff. Here are those people. Thank you so very, very much for your support. Uh, eventually, I will remember to ch- actually change this thing here to the new one that I actually did. Uh, I don't know why it's still the old one. I'm going to have to fix that. So uh, you guys probably won't notice it because I actually put, you know, the new one in over this. But I'm watching, like, the really old scroll credits right now, which is annoying. Anyways, thanks, everybody, for your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.